Welcome back everyone to some more F1 and my team. Today we're here for the Belgian Grand Prix round number eight of the season and officially the halfway point. However, looking at the calendar, there is a possible chance we may have to short on the season due to the release of F1 22, but I still need to crunch the numbers on that. Before we jump into the action, as always, check out the previous episode, guys. The British Grand Prix covered in rain. Link up in the top right. It was a very, very unique race with unique circumstances and something I've not had in this game ever before. If you want to enjoy this episode, leave a like and subscribe. And let's get into it as we kick off with a season break, which we quickly returned from and ready for... The Belgian Grand Prix at the legendary Spa Francorchamps Champs circuit. In the background, you can see we have the forecast and more rain in qualifying. So we'll see how that works out for us. It looks like it should arrive so somewhere towards the end of Q2, possibly start of Q3. So yeah, we're going to jump into it. First things first is going to be Q1, as always. And we're going to try and get through on one set of tyres and hopefully just one single lap. So let's get to work. As always... First of all, set up for this weekend. We're going to go ahead and run four laps of fuel so we can go for a second lap if necessary on the tyres. I'm going to bring down the, uh, or in this case, actually put up the rear wing for stability, also increasing the off diff, and then also lowering the suspension and the anti roll bar both on the rear, along with the usual ride height, brake pressure, and tyre pressure changes to avoid having floor damages, uh, big lockups, and tire overheating. So with all of that done and all pushed aside, we can now hit the track and get to work. Soft tires on straight away. And we're gonna see if we can set a decent lap here as we're halfway through it. Down through turn nine though, you'll see here, I just have two or three stabs of the wheel as I try to you know, get the line right. And unfortunately we invalidate. You also might notice in the bottom right, we have the engine wear indicator on and I'm going to try and stretch this race out with the engine and then change it for the next one in Monza, hopefully. So here we are. After a cool off, you know, after that mistake, I actually slowed down for sector two and three. I went for a second push and uh, we were up on our delta up until the point of invalidation. And we're now just pushing flat out all the way to the end. So approaching the bus stop, you're going to try and spot the 100 and then break just after that. Down to third gear as we tackle the apexes. Easy does it, try to maintain a high minimum speed. And then a DRS open up to the line, 37.7, and we go P4. And about three tenths off the pace, but that will be more than enough. We go back to the pits, and I saw there was rain actually arriving in like five minutes time, and nobody actually went back out. So that is it for Q1, job done for us. Um, I believe a couple of people will try to improve, but not many did the rain uh, kind of ruined everyone's last run so into q2 comfortably and the rain is now here in full effect so intermediates on the wagon as we try to set a decent bank having a bit of a wobble through Blanchimont we've got a bit of traffic ahead in the form of Latifi who is on a lap by the way so he's not going to get out of the way making a way out of the bus stop chicane across the line and it's a 48-4 and p4 so uh, a decent first lap decent banker and that should get us on the board quite nicely. We're going to keep pushing though, because in the rain you want to try and keep that momentum going, doing consecutive laps, building up that momentum. And you can see here, we're nearly three tenths, two and a half tenths up here, and absolutely flying as we're really catching up to Latifi, but we've lost the back end as we hit the wall. Your rear wing is damaged. You can expect a lot of oversteer unless we bring you in and fix it. Now that was not ideal. Uh, quite a hefty shunt. Rear wing damage, and we went back to the pits. I looked at the gaps, and even though a P9 was safe by about three tenths, so I'm going to gamble and not go back out. And luckily, it worked out fine. The only person to really improve was Jack Aitken, but comfortably through by a couple of tenths and job done for us. And we managed to save a set of tyres, albeit with damage. Had we set our actual lap, it probably would have been somewhere in the region of the P3, I reckon. So. The car's fast, but we need to find a little bit more pace. for Verstappen setting the, the, the fastest lap so far with a 47.8 in Q2. That's um, a pretty quick time, but that will be also our reference for Q3 as we try to improve. So, nine minutes is when I left the garage, and now with six minutes to go, we're finishing our first lap. And it was a really good lap up until the bus stop, which I messed up really, really badly. 
Up to the line though, it's going to be a 147.6, and that is a new benchmark as we go provisional pole, two tenths quicker than what the Verstappen done in Q2. And I know there's more time in it. So, like I said before, in the rain, momentum's key, so you want to fuel up. There is a chance it might dry by the end of this session, so these might be the best conditions for the intermediates. However, we do invalidate through a rouge and then radiant at the top. So we're going to actually slow back down, cool off the tires and go for another push. I've got just enough fuel for one more, so let's go for it. Four minutes to go. The rain is a near enough stop. It's just a wet track at this point. So these are going to be the best conditions for us. That's a turn one. Lassels, third gear. Be patient. Try not to lock up. And we do an excellent job of hitting the apex and also driving off very cleanly picking up some excellent traction downhill up through a rouge bit of a lift trying to carry that speed over ready on and now we go on to the camel straight so far so good now you want to try and spot the braking for lacom usually in the dry 50 meter board i'm going to try and go as close as i can to that in the wet tap the inside curbs as you try to maintain a decent corner speed and malmody very important here to use all the track as you run the track limit right to the limit downhill turn eight right hander a little bit wide on the steer but we recover with a good exit turn nine beautifully done there with a the curb getting the, the perfect amount of rotation on the front end and now into Puan down a gear didn't quite catch the apex but we do carry some decent corner speed and, and gain a bit on the exit into Stavlo fifth gear careful with this inside curb which is very slippery and then also this one as well. Try to be patient as we make our way now into this right hander where you want to use all the runoff curb to really open up the next one, which is where we lost it last time. As you can see, we're purple in both sectors as we're absolutely flying. And this could be the pole lap right here. As all we have to do now is tackle Blanchimont with a very slight lift, hesitation. And then the bus stop, which we locked up massively last time, breaking at the 100. Third gear, still a bit deep again this time. Didn't quite get all the apex, but much better than last time. And we're going to improve by six tenths of a second, setting a 47-0. And we're going to see now what the AI can do on their lap times. As you can see here, we officially secure pole. The AI went back out at the end of qualifying, very late. And the track actually started to dry and the rain stopped. And to the point where DRS got enabled right at the very end. So... I believe the AI didn't really set an improved lap time. So job done. We timed the conditions beautifully. The intermediates work great. And there you go. It's a convincing pole here at Spark Franco Champ. A pole that I don't think I would have had had it stayed dry. But we're usually faster in the wet. And that's what happened here today. So there's a lot for qualifying. We're now going to move into the race. Let's run you through the driver grid order for today's exciting race. Martinez lines up on pole position, edging out Max Verstappen, who'll start from P2. Moving on to the rest of the grid, we have Ricardo, Bottas, Lando Norris, and Stroll, Aitken, Gasly, Ocon, and Yuki Tsunoda, Russell, Latifi, Daniel Tictum, and Lundgaard, Giovinazzi, Leclerc, they'll be starting further back after an earlier grid penalty. Callum Eilert and Nobuharu Matsushita. Joe Schwartzman. Mick Schumacher and Nikita Mazepin. That's it then, it's time to go racing as we head to trackside for today's race. Let's get to work. P1, pole position, we know what we have to do if we can win this race. That would be a massive statement in the championship. Verstappen is going to be behind us and I'm expecting Max to be much quicker in the race compared to qualifying in the rain. Either way, it should be a fun one. Hopefully you enjoy it. Leave a like. Strategy, soft to medium, one stop. Pretty straightforward. I was tempted to start the medium, but I'm going to play it safe and start on the soft. Fuel load minimum, as always. We want to try and save that weight and just increase our pace and reduce tire temps. So let's get into it and hopefully we can win it. Right, here we go. Short run to turn one. Five laps to run. Underway. Not the best start of a snap and does get a fly out. Really good start from Max. We've got Ricardo on our outside and Verstappen's completely gone. My God. What a start. 
Ricardo here side by side. I'm going to let him go. I'm going to try to tactically just fall in behind and see if we can get him back here. I do wonder if my wings are a little bit high, running 7-6. About to find out. Looks like we are struggling a little bit for straight line speed. We're going to get on the inside of Ricardo. Don't really like that inside curve, but we'll go all the way around the outside and pick up P2 again. Had to make that happen. Hopefully our wings will help us in the middle sector, but Verstappen getting the, the strong start. I don't think my style is particularly bad, to be fair, but Max just nailed his, which is credit to him, to be fair. And he's already putting away. We know about the AI, how strong they are through Puan. So uh, this ain't going to be easy. Ricardo closing in behind me. Feels like I need to try and find my pace here. I'm still kind of used to the wet. Let's try and focus up. I'm usually pretty strong in sector 3, so I can hopefully get a gap hit. I'm actually faster everywhere else in the lap, except for this one corner. And I lose so much in Puan, which they I just kind of make up the time that I gain. So that's a bit painful. I'm about half a second to four tenths quicker per lap. But then I lose about three tenths of that in Puan. Having said that, we've got ourselves into the race pace now. I think I can drop Ricardo here out of DRS range in this final sec. The tyres are getting a bit hot though, so I need to be careful. But Max is running a very strong pace early doors here. DRS is being enabled this lap. We can use DRS when you are within one second of the car ahead and in the DRS zone. Fastest up the race for us. We take it away from Max. Meanwhile, Ricardo is just outside of the one second window, so we've managed to drop him out of range, which is good. Let's try and keep working here and try and stick with Verstappen. He's really like running a strong pace, but I'm going to try my best to keep up. Another strong lap from us. Okay, if we continue to use fuel at this rate, then we won't have enough to reach the end of the race. Don't really care, Jeff, to be honest, mate. That's not really a concern right now. I think I've got enough to get within a second, but then we're going to drop back again at Puon. That's kind of going to be the theme of the race, is how close can I get before Puon? And then can I have one lap where I now poo on, maybe bleed one and a half, two tenths at max, and then get myself into the RS range. We're going to get pretty close on this lap for DRS. They uh, don't usually use any on this back straight, so I'm able to gain quite a bit of ground. I don't think I'm going to get it on the pit straight here, which is a bit of a shame. Maybe I can get it for the camel straight, but I feel like just a little bit too far back. Oh, that was a bit of a snap through there. That left rear man is getting hot. I don't think it's going to affect us in terms of getting DRS from the snap, and we should have it for the pitch straight here. There we go. I think this all could come down to the pit stop phase. We're scheduled to box lap A, but we changed our strategy thanks to a strategy change to lap 9. We're approaching the pit window. You'll be on the mediums. Let's see, let's see how this all pans out. But we'll have the RS on max now for the first time, so it's going to help us keep up a lot easier. So I won't have to push the tyres as hard. And set up the move for the Camel Straight, ideally. Back end getting a little bit out of shape through there, lost a little bit of time to be fair. Not really ideal. Might be a bit too far back. Big, big late breaking into turn one to try and close the gap. Aiken pits, which is good. Jack is in the pits. Jack in the pits. That uh, frees up our pit box for us. Let's see if we can get the run of a snap in here. Let's see. It seems like we are down on straight line speed. The Red Bull seems pretty slippery. But we have the RS. Here we go. Closing in on our championship rival. Max moves across on the braking there a little bit. Had to back off. It's game on in this race for the win. Now that Aiken has pit, I'm going to box his lap. Pitting this lap then, come into the pits at the end of this lap. I'm going to use the fact we've got a free pit box to try and either box with Verstappen or on the cut Verstappen. Either way, I want to stick with him. We've worked hard to get back you know, with the gap. Max stays out, so here we go. Undercut attempt. This is it. Hopefully we find some clean air on track. Slow down. Lovely. Excellent entry. A lot of traffic to be fair. This could be a sticky one. I'm hoping a lot of it bails into the pits to help me out a bit, but there's a lot of traffic at the bus stop. We're going to need a quick stop here. Sub two seconds ideally. Complete 
Go now. 2.7 is not good. That was our last stop. No more scheduled pit stops. I'm going to reach on behind a bit of traffic. Leclerc there. Lungard as well. This ain't going to be easy, but we'll give it a shot. If Max pits this lap, we can still undercut him. We've got enough of a gap ahead of us to make it work. Now would be a great time for Leclerc and Lungard to get out of my way by going into the pit lane. Let's see what happens. Max does pit, so this is it. Let's see how this all works out. We're absolutely flying. Look at the straight line speed we have here. As we close up to Leclerc, we're going to have to pass him. We can't afford to wait around. Especially if he pits, so we'll just go to the outside. Lungard pits as well, which helps. And we're going to get the RS right. This could be interesting. Let's find out. It's going to be close. There's Max on the right. I think we've done it. Have we got the, the gap to clear the RS? No, we haven't. So Max will have the RS on us here. So not out of the woods just yet. Let's see how fast that Red Bull is on the straight. Ricardo should be in this lap, so that will give us back P1. Okay, so we've stayed ahead. Undercut has worked. Positions flip. But now do we have the pace to drop Verstappen? That's the question. Ricardo pits. Verstappen is keeping up and keeping the pressure on. We're going to set a new fastest lap. You might want to start being a little more conservative with your fuel. We may not finish at this rate of usage. I'll take care of it later, Jeff. Let me crack on. Verstappen is going to be hard to drop and uh, DRS is going to fly in. So even more important now that Verstappen doesn't overtake us. Otherwise, we may not get back past. It's control of Tronics is 70% now. Quite a few issues starting to stack up. And I'm, to be fair, a bit off on the fuel. I mean, I'm a lap down, so I need to try and save that fuel if I can. So I'll make a conscious effort to run in slightly higher gears at times. And a bit of lifting coast here and there. First warning for track limits. I think we'll be okay though. Not too concerned about that. I can't shake Max off though. This is going to be a tough one. I'm pushing quite hard this lap. Personal best, second sector. Fuel is about to be back on target. Uh, DRS is working again. I'm trying to break a gap because if Max goes full power mode in the last two laps, it's going to be very hard for me to keep him behind. So if we're going to break DRS, and it has to be now, but. I just don't have enough pace, I don't think, to really drop him. He's going to be with us the whole way. Let's see, I don't think I'm going to drop him here. I need a perfect turn one for that to happen. That was pretty decent to be fair. But Max responds with an excellent turn one of his own. Schumacher out. There's four laps of fuel remaining. No safety car though, or virtual safety car, so we keep going. This might be the lap where I break the RS, to be fair. Let's see. Second one for track limits. Not ideal. As I'm trying to push now. First and the best second sector again. Got to max nine tenths. We might just get it this lap. Let's keep our battery switched on. I think this is the one though. We've got the breakaway finally. I've been sweating this out for laps. Hence why I've not been talking. I've been pushing as hard as I can. Oh god, no, never mind, that's not going to help. God, I finally got it as well. Oh, I might just have it here. No, nope. Max is going to hold on. There's three laps of fuel remaining. I absolutely now turn one, but Max has got DRS, but this is the lap now. If I can just have a pretty decent second sector, we're going to be okay here. Let's see how much Verstappen gains through Pool 1. 1.35, down to one second on the nose. Alright, we've got it. We've cleared Max. Now let's see how long it takes for him to go into full power mode and try to chase back after me again. This is a great lap from us though. Whoa. On the limit, overheating the mediums. That's how much I'm pushing at the minute. There we go. Okay, clear. New fastest lap. Ricardo out of the race. I can see that on the minimap. Great news for us in the Constructors' Championship. Two laps to go. Let's see if we can beat Verstappen here today. There's confirmation of Ricardo's retirement. Engine wear pretty damn high now, 75%. Control electronics. Hopefully we make it a lap and a half to go. Here we go then, into the last sector. I'm absolutely sweating. 
pushed so hard that race, every single lap. I managed to break the gap to Verstappen. Let's bring it home. Hopefully the engine holds it. I'm, I'm not using any battery. I'm going to try and stealth the curbs a little bit if I can avoid it. 76% control electronics as we make our way into the bus stop for the final time. And this is going to be a massive win for the championship. Also with Ricardo dropping out, the constructors as well. Superb driving. That's the race win. Many doubted whether they could pull off the win here at Spa-Francorchamps, but they've done so in spectacular style. Tell me, Ant, how did they manage to achieve this win? Well, tyre management probably played quite a large role in the outcome of this one. As ever, it's not just about speed, it's all about maintaining that speed consistently over a stint, over a race distance. So being able to keep up the lap times while still being smooth on the controls and gentle on the tyres, that's really where the race was won today. A show-stopping performance from the three drivers approaching the podium right now. It's been an interesting Grand Prix, that's for sure. Job done, and a massive win for us here at Belgium. Verstappen, P2, Lando, P3, Stroll, Ocon, Bottas, Gasly, Latifi, Sonoda, and Russell round out the points with Aitken missing out in P11. Second poor race in a row from Jack. Bit of a shame, but it is what it is. Luckily, Ricardo retired, so we actually outscored Red Bull. So, yeah, fast lap as well, which is a great bonus. Let's look at the standing. So, we're 46 points clear of Verstappen, which is a pretty damn big gap and this is the halfway point of the season now so eight races remain and we have nearly two race wins in our pocket eight can still p5 but bottas only two points behind him so another three points behind him and we need the constructors by 22 points at the halfway point so both chart both both tiles up for grabs we can still win them there's no reason why not i think we need jack to just turn up the performance a little bit and pick it up a little bit but i reckon it could be our year so we'll see what happens guys hopefully you enjoyed this one leave a like if you did subscribe for more daily f1 content on our channel as always a massive shout out for watching up until this point i'm not sure if there's still going to be eight races left but we'll see what happens guys either way hopefully you enjoyed it and yeah as always a massive plug to the members for supporting the content and finally check out the two videos on your screen right now if you haven't seen them and yeah guys i'll see you all in the next one until then take care and it's about from me